If you play on Nintendo Switch, you need to see this. The Hyperion Pro Controller by Nixie is designed to replace your standard Switch Joy-Cons, and they very kindly sent me this one to review. Please remember that transparency is very important to me, so these opinions are all 100% my own. So without further ado, let's take a look. Straight out of the box, you're faced with the two controllers and a bit of plastic on top. You've also got a USB to USB-C lead, which is used for charging. Nothing fancy, just a standard lead. Of course, you've got the manual, which has got some instructions on how to use the controllers, and it's also got some useful tips on how to use some of the functions. Loads of different languages in here, including the specifications de produit, if you will. But anyway, who even needs a manual? Then we've got the actual dock, which is what the controllers connect to. I was a little bit concerned because when I tapped it, the plastics felt kind of tinny and a little bit cheap. But once I actually lifted out the controllers, I was quite pleasantly surprised by the weight of them because they were really quite light. They also come with these replacement thumbsticks and they've got different sizes and grips so you can pick and choose whichever ones feel right for you. You assemble the controller just how you would with your regular switch by just sliding the controllers onto the dock. And then you have your full controller. I'm sure you've noticed there are some more buttons compared to the regular switch, but don't worry because I'll go through each one of these with you. My hands fit the controller really well, which can be a bit unusual because my hands, I would say, are slightly on the smaller side, but overall it felt quite comfortable to hold. You can see here you've got the two slots on the bottom where you will plug in the charging cable. Then I went mad pressing all of the buttons and the D-pad was amazing. It felt really nice to press and was definitely better than the Switch controllers. These fancy buttons back here are programmable and when I was holding the controller, they fell quite nicely on my middle finger so it was really easy to press them. One thing I will say is when they were on the dock, the controllers had a little bit of movement and were a bit wobbly, but it was definitely time to attach it to the Switch and see if that was the same. Sliding them on was really easy and just the same as regular controllers, and once I had them connected, a fancy red light turned on to let me know that they were on. Then I could just press A and start playing immediately. I ran around my Animal Crossing island for a little bit and just tested it out, and I didn't notice any input lag, which was really good. The buttons seemed to respond really quickly, and I didn't notice any difference between these controllers and the normal Switch ones. But I did notice there was some wiggle room here, but only on the left-hand side. The right side seemed to be fine, so I'm wondering if maybe my Switch is just a bit dodge. I've seen other reviews that said that these controllers fit snugly, so I think that might be a me problem. Now onto the more technical specifications. I've put a full list on the screen that you can have a read through, but I think the most important ones to note are that it's got a Hall Effect joystick, which means that you won't get any stick drift at all. The battery lasts for about six and a half hours, but unfortunately it takes two hours to charge, which seems like quite a lot, although it does charge if it is actually attached to the Switch. You can also change the RGB lighting and program the extra buttons to do some cool stuff. Now I think it's time to check out some of the fancier functions that the Hyperion Pro offers. And remember the manual that it came with earlier that I just threw away? Turns out I actually needed that. So I spent the next 10 minutes trying to figure out the RGB lighting that apparently you can change on the controller. By holding the turbo button and pressing in the thumbstick, I was able to change the lighting to seven different colours. You can do the same on both controllers, so if you wanted to, you can have different colour lights on either side. If you hold the turbo button and double click the thumbstick, then you can cycle through a couple of different breathing lighting options. One thing I didn't like was that the controllers didn't actually sync their lighting, so one would dim and then the other one rather than syncing up. I'd prefer it if I could have the option to sort of match the lights together so then they would do the breathing effect at the same time. Now I'm going to talk a bit more about how to use the turbo button. I'm quite new to these fancy buttons, so it was definitely a learning curve for me, but it was really easy to understand and to program. Essentially, the turbo button means that you don't have to button mash because it will press the button automatically for you. As you can see here, I'm hitting my rock and I have to press the A button every time I want to hit it. To switch on the turbo mode, you have to hold the button that you want it to work on and then press the turbo button. Then as you can see, the A button will function all by itself without me having to do the button mashing. To turn it off again, simply do the same process that we did to turn it on, and it will return to a normal A button. Now let's talk about the three extra buttons that you have on the back of each controller. The top one you can cycle through to change the different vibration intensities, and there are five different settings that you can choose from. You can have it off, 25%, 50%, 75 or 100%. The other button on the back is the big one, and you can change what this does by programming it using the smaller button. I tried to program it and it felt a little bit awkward because I had to use two hands. I'm holding the smaller back button while pressing a sequence of keys that I want the larger back button to trigger. Every time you press a key, the controller does a little vibrate to let you know that it's picked it up. Then it's programmed and you can press the big back button to trigger the sequence. 
Although I've got to be honest, I'm not really sure what I'm actually going to use this for, but if you've got any ideas, then let me know in the comments and what I could use this for in cozy games. Also note that because these are two separate controllers, you can only program things that are on either side of the controller. I'm not actually sure if that makes sense, but like the left back button can only trigger buttons that are on the left controller and the right back button can only trigger buttons that are on the right controller. You're probably thinking, oh my God, this thing has got so many buttons. But don't worry, we're done with buttons. Buttons are done, we're finished. Now we're just gonna move on to seeing how it looks physically compared to the normal Switch controllers. As you can see, the Hyperion Pro is quite a lot bigger than the regular Switch controllers, but this is because of the ergonomic shape. The downside to this is that it doesn't fit in regular carry cases, but Nixie do offer a special carry case that will fit in this controller as well as your Switch. Weight wise, it's pretty much the same, maybe a tad heavier than the normal controller, but it's really not that different. It's also got a bit of texturing on the back, which feels quite nice to hold, and there's these little dents on the bottom so you can stand it up if you want to. Now I'm sure you're eagerly wondering, okay Kaz, well how much is this going to cost? And for the exact model that I have, it's £49 or $65. There are other colour variants you can get as well. The purple one is pretty cool, there's green and also black. But personally I quite like the white one. Now I went onto the official Nintendo website to see how much my Joy-Cons cost. And for the pastel pink and pastel yellow ones, they were $69.99. Now don't get me wrong, I love the colours, but there's no ergonomic grips or RGB lighting or fancy buttons that the Hyperion Pro offers for less money. Now if you're interested in picking up one of these for yourself, you can click the link in the description box down below or use my code KazLikesGaming. Full disclosure, if you do buy one using my link, I will get a small amount of commission. Now I'm going to go and use it for a week and I'll be back to tell you how I found it. One week later. Hello, I'm back. It's actually been about a week and a half, but that's because I've been recovering from a cold and I could barely string a sentence together without going into a coughing fit. But here we are anyway. I've been using the Hyperion Pro to play Palea and to be honest, I've just had a really great time with it. Obviously a week and a half isn't really that long to try it, but I've had no issues with the quality or the buttons or anything like that. I found it really comfortable to hold and use, and so I probably ended up playing for many more hours than what I should have. For me personally, I didn't actually use any of the fancier buttons, but I'm sure that some of you out there will want to program them and find a use for them. Overall, I think what you get for the price is just way better value than the Switch controllers, and I know myself that I won't be buying normal Switch controllers again. Plus it is coming up to Christmas, so if you know a Switch gamer, then this could be a really good Christmas gift for them. Once again, if you do want to purchase the Hyperion Pro, then feel free to use my link for 10% off. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to come and join the community. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you soon.